In this demo, you're going to learn how to create an Office 365 connector and add it to Microsoft Teams. The first step is going to be to create a new Microsoft Teams app that contains a web service and the necessary details to associate the Office 365 connector to connect it to Microsoft Teams. Then you're going to register a new Office 365 connector with the connectors developer dashboard. So I'm going to start by going over here to my command prompt, creating a new folder for our project. Let's call this the learn MS Teams connectors, and then I'll jump into that folder after we create it. And I'll run yo teams to start the process. I'm going to accept most of the defaults here, such as the solution name. Uh, we're going to put this in our current folder, the um, project name, the company name, the manifest version, the scaffolding. And when it asks us what features we want to add to the project, I'm going to unselect a tab and I'm going to select a connector. Uh, the URL where you want to host it, I'll just choose the default option, the default option for the loading indicator, and then I'm going to say we're going to create a new uh, connector that's hosted in this solution. Now I don't know the ID of my connector and I'll explain why we don't know this in just a minute or why we haven't created it in a minute and also why we're not creating that first. Um, but we'll come to that in just a few minutes. So I'm just going to accept the default option because we'll change that later in our project. Um, the name of the connector, uh, I'm going to call this my first Teams connector. And now uh, the Yeoman generator is going to create the folders and the files uh, required for my project. And then it's going to uh, run npm install to go ahead and download and install all the dependencies. Now that the project has been created, I'm going to run uh, code dot to launch our project in VS Code. Now let's take a look at the project that was created. So if I come over here into the source folder and I look at the manifest, manifest.json, what you're going to see is I have this new connectors section. It's got a connector ID, the configuration URL, and uh, the scopes for where everything is defined. Um, the connector ID is going to be added or it's going to be set when our project first runs and when we generate the manifest. This connector ID is going to come from the environment variable setting here that you see listed right here. This is the value that would have been set when I ran uh, Yo Teams uh, and it prompted me for what the connector ID is. But the challenge that we're going to have with this is that when I go to register the connector in the connector developer dashboard, I'm going to need to know the domain of where or the URL of where my web service is hosted. And I don't know that yet because I haven't spun up my project. Every endpoint in, uh, that's requested by Microsoft Teams has to be in a secure uh, and routable location. So it's got to be an HTTPS URL. When we spin up our project, uh, usually in our local environment, it's generating uh, or it's hosting it at the URL localhost or HTTP localhost. We're going to use a tool called ngrok that's going to allow us to create a secure routable URL that's going to point to the local uh, host uh, URL. But the challenge is, is that ngrok is always going to generate a new subdomain, a dynamic subdomain, every time it starts. So I have a bit of a chicken and egg problem, as we, use, as we usually say. Um, I can't create the, uh, the connector, register the connector, without having the domain of where the web service is going to be generated. And I can't create the project until I have the GUID or the ID of the connector. So I can't do both of those. They both require each one. So instead, what I've done is I've just decided that I'm going to create the project and then we're going to go spin the project up in a moment. We're going to get the domain. We'll then go register the connector and then we'll come back to the project and we'll update the connector ID in the manifest that's generated uh, by the process, uh, by the, the build process. Um, when you're doing this in production, um, you're going to want to end up having, you're going to specify like this host name is the URL of where you're going to host your application. And by then you'll also already know the connector ID. And so you'll be able to set both of those values for production so that when you build your project and you go to deploy it, that won't be a problem. Now, another thing that we have inside this manifest file here um, is I, you'll notice that I have configurable tabs, static tabs, and bots. These are all empty arrays. Uh, for a connector, these can't be there. So I'm going to remove those. I'm also going to remove the empty array for compose extensions um, as well because they can't be there for a connector. Now let's take a look at the configuration page. This is the page that's going to be shown when we first go to configure our 
uh, connector on a channel. Now I need to make one edit to this file uh, that's generated here. And you'll see down here uh, where I have available colors, I'm using the find method. I'm gonna switch this to a filter. And I'm going to, and because the filter is gonna return back an array, I need to just return back a single item there. Now the important part of this component to take note of is the call to uh, the register on save handler. Um, this is called when the user selects the save button on the config page. Selecting save is going to save the configuration of the connector in Microsoft Teams and it's going to notify the connector's web service that it's been added to a team. So the code that you see here is going to do the following. It's first going to update the settings for the connector inside of Microsoft Teams. So you see that listed right here. It then is going to call get settings to get all the settings that were saved inside for this um, connector inside of Microsoft Teams and it's going to submit an HTTP post to our connector that's going to include some values in the settings. So specifically, it's going to be setting the webhook, the user, and the app type. The webhook is the endpoint or the incoming webhook URL that the connector should submit to. The ID or the user object ID property is the ID of the user who registered the connector, and the app type is the value of the team when we associate the connector with uh, a team. When this post is complete or when this is successful, I'm gonna notify Microsoft Teams of success of saving the, um, the connector settings. And you see that as I'm being, I have this event that's being passed in. So I'm gonna notify Teams that it's been saved or that there's been a problem. Now let's take a look at the web service. The web service is inside the server, my first Teams connector, and then this TS file. So if we take a look at this one, what you'll see here is that this is exposing two endpoints. So you see you have an endpoint here for connect and an endpoint here for uh, ping. There are methods that match these two endpoints. When connect is called, as you saw when we click the save button in the previous uh, config page, connect is gonna be called um, and it's going to simply save the connector registration to a local JSON file. This Sample web service in the default project uses a JSON file to store the registration. It doesn't contain any logic to update an existing connector when it's changed or remove a connector uh, when it's removed. But in a production connector, you're probably going to want to implement a system that saves the registration to a persistent data store that handles uh, the scenarios of updating and removing the connector from a team. What the ping method does that you see here uh, this method uh, can be called by anyone and it's used to test the connector. Um, when it's called, it's going to go create a card and, it's, uh, and send it to all of the other registered uh, connectors uh, for all, all those places where it's been registered. And you notice here that it's sending this card right here, walking through, and it's going to run a, uh, a post using the Axios um, package. It's going to run a post and it's going to submit the actual card as part of the body of the post. Now we need to get the URL of our project before we go generate or create uh, register the connector. So I'm going to do that by coming over to the command prompt and running gulp ngrok serve. Now we can see the URL that's been spun up right here in this host name section. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and copy it. And I'm just going to put that in a file here just to keep track of it. Now, if for any reason the web server that is spinning up right now, if for any reason it stops, either you stop it or it crashes, the next time you spin it up, that ngrok URL is going to change. And so everywhere you're going to see that we're going to use this URL, you're going to have to go back and make changes and update the configuration to make sure um, that that URL is reflected uh, in your configuration.